What that means is horrified family members will team up and catch much larger prey. Sometimes up to the size of a jackrabbit. Careful when you look up, guys. Sometimes up to the size of a jackrabbit, which is a great survival strategy for that desert environment where these pups are found. All right, Jack, you did a pretty good job off here. What do you say we make our way home? Yep, right up here on the roof. Same place you took off from. There you go. Good job. And how about a shake of the tail goodbye? Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Good job, Jack. Well, the next animal I have for you is an animal you can find right here in southern Texas, but it's most commonly found in Central and South America. What's known as a Kawada monkey, or Kawada for short, and our Kawada name is Sonora. Sonora's always been right around the corner. Now, if you take a real close look at it, she actually resembles a mammal you can find quite abundantly here in the United States. Maybe raiding trash cans, and you get them. You guys got it. She's actually a very close relative to a raccoon. She looks kind of like a raccoon. These quaddies are omnivores. What that means is they'll pretty much eat anything they find in the wild. They'll use their incredible sense of smell to find it. Not only that, they can use their nose as sort of an extra pair of hands to root around in dead leaves and dirt to find anything crickets and grubs, anything that you pick. Fruits that might have fallen off of a tree. These quaddies will even eat carrion, which is the animal that have died in the wild. Not only that, they can also climb trees incredibly well, as I noticed there. Her long tail, she actually uses that for balance. So instead of wrapping it around her branch like a prehensile tail, does, instead of what she does, she sticks it straight up in the air, which is sort of like her udder. Not only that, these quaddies can rotate their rear ankles 180 degrees, just like that. The reason why they do that is so they can climb down a tree head first. All right, Sonora, that was a fantastic job. Good job. Thank you very much, Lori. All right, what do you think? We'll make our way back home there, Sonora. Good job. Right. Well, this next bird of prey I have to show you is a bird of prey that's so well adapted. It survives on every single continent except for Antarctica. Now, he hunts primarily at night. I know guess what that. this bird might be? It's a A bat! A bat! Yes, guys, I have a fun owl to show you next. And the cool thing about owls, they're incredibly well adapted for hunting at night. Their eyesight allows them to pick up something as small as a mouse from a football field's length away, only using starlight to see. They also have incredible hearing. In fact, their hearing is so good, it can detect that same mouth no. underneath two feet of snow. We actually demonstrate that sound location with a tape recorder right here. I don't know how well you guys can hear that, but it's got little cricket noises on it. We're going to see if our barn owl people can find these tricks. And then we'll place it right behind this barrel. I'll leave a little treat. And Cecil will be joining us from that window right back there. Alright, Cecil, there he comes. All the way out here, buddy. So everybody can get so close at you. There you go. There he comes. Under his. Good job, Cecil. That was fantastic, buddy. You're not a turtle. Don't want to see him on Another cool adaptation that these owls have is their feathers are actually incredibly soft. The reason why they have those soft feathers is so they can reduce air friction over their wings. Ooh, for you. So they can reduce air friction over their wings, so essentially what they have is silent flight. The reason why the owls have silent flight is so they can sneak up on one of their favorite prey items, the mouse. You know, a barn owl this size can catch and eat about 500 mice each year. That's pretty incredible, huh? Where's the size of Jackie that Harris talked from earlier? Did you catch me? Well over a thousand miles a year. What's really funny though, ever since we started training with Birds of Brands show, we haven't seen a single mouse, rat, gopher, ground squirrel, nothing. They all kind of disappeared when we came into town. They started doing those jobs, it was real beneficial. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> a really, really good way to put it. Is that a rat pot we have? Tomato sound. Think of that. Right up there. I've never seen a rat fly before. <laughs> Wait, you know what, guys? I've actually got another really cool animal for you. This animal you can find in the savanna grasses of Africa. It's actually a wildcat, an African wildcat. You can this guy with a barrel right here. And we are going to do a little bit of catfishing today. So I need my fishing pole right here. What's really cool about this cat I have to show you is uh, he's got the longest legs compared to body um, for this uh, size cat. He's about 30 pound cat. What's really cool is they use those legs for a couple things. First of all, they can sprint up to about 30 miles an hour in short bursts. And secondly, one of their favorite prey is the birds. These turtles can actually jump 10 feet in the air to catch these birds. And we're actually going to demonstrate that behavior with this little bird right here. The next thing I want to show you is an African turtle, and his name is Kimani. Kimani will be joining us for the same quarter sonora day. Yeah. Link. All right. Now as Kamani stocks his prey and sneaks up on it, this is something you might see when those birds decide to watch or try to fly away from it. All right, Steve, what do you think, buddy? Let's get that bird. There you go. Good job, Steve. That was fantastic. All right, buddy. I can see the color on his fur and the spots on his fur help him blend in. I think that sticks out a lot with these cats. The color of his fur actually looks like that brown color that you find in the banana grass, that burnt brown color. Those spots on his fur help him blend in. They actually break up his body line so he's sitting still. So they kind of blend in so they can sneak up as close as they can get to their prey. All right, he's got all kinds of treats back there. Guys, might also notice the uh, white lines on the back of his ears there. Those work kind of like eyes in the back of his head. Because anytime these wild cats hunt in the wilds of Africa, what they'll do is they'll sneak up on their prey when it's not looking. And then, thank you very much, Lori. <laughs> what they'll do is they'll sneak up on their prey when they're not looking. And then when the uh, prey looks at it, they'll freeze. So Kamani always looks like he has eyes in the back of his head. That's what they'll All right, guys. So for the next animal, we're going to take a trip all the way down to South America. But for this animal, I'm actually going to need the help of a very brave volunteer who's not afraid of anything. Nothing at all. I want you right there. I saw your hand go first. All right, come on up here. All right. What's your name? Mary Doran. Okay, Mary Doran, what I'm going to have you do is stand right here next to this blood stain. Okay? <laughs> So the next animal I have to show you, her claws are real sharp and about an inch, inch and a half long. So, so I think it's I'm going to have to put on a little bit of protection, okay? There we go, we'll put these on you. Yeah, there we go. Put those on your hands there. So they're kind of big and awkward. Oh, wrong hands. But the bigger they are, the more protection you have, okay? All right. Now, uh, this animal is part of that defense. And also spring. <coughs> so, kind of protect your eyes. I've got something for that too. <laughs> now that I think about it, you might want to put this on also. So, we'll stick these on you. Okay. There you go. I'll stick this on you. It's done. <laughs> All right. Are you ready to do this? You sure you really want to do this? You're positive. <laughs> you know what? She was gonna quit anyway. Um, so the next animal I have to bring out is uh, the only thing you don't want to do is make eye contact with it. So what you need to do is look straight into the eye. I'm gonna stand over here. The next animal I have to show you is Naya. Naya is a Mandua. Mandua's are found in the rainforest of South America. Careful, make eye contact. I'm just kidding, Jerry. Go ahead. Take a look at her over there. What is it? See, she's not that bad, is she? I'll go ahead and take these gloves from the animal. Alright, what I'm going to have you do is actually feed Naya one of her favorite treats. And Lori's got it right there for you. What her favorite treat is. 
Now, um, you might have also noticed that she was walking out here. Why is she? The that I was talking about earlier. She actually uses those spots for a couple of things. First of all, to get to her food. She hunts around for those termites and ants and stuff. She's actually strong enough, and the spots are actually sharp enough to rip through uh, termite metal. Even the tree bark and trees come up with those animals. And crap, not only that, she can use it as defense also. She'll rear up on her high legs, kind of like that, and she'll spread her arms out, her front paws out like that. She can actually flash that thing to us. That's another really cool thing. There you go, she grabs onto her bottle there. You guys might also notice her prehensile tail. It's the tail I was talking about earlier. It kind of looks like that. What that does, it wraps around those tree branches and works sort of like a thin blade. And in that tail is actually strong enough to support her entire body weight. That's how strong that tail is. And um, she does also spray it like a skunk as one of her defenses, but definitely wasn't joking about that one. She definitely has a own stench about her. All right, uh, how about, what do you think? Are you almost done there? Almost done. It's really cool that these animals are actually feared by most of the people down in South America. They feel like uh, these animals can come and attack their dogs. It's actually not true at all. These animals actually prefer to stay solitary as far away from people as possible. We're actually helping these guys out because you'll find them a lot on the roads down in South America. On the side of the road, they got hit by a car or something like that. What they're actually doing is building Spandua bridges. They're building bridges over the highway so that these Spandua can get over the road without getting hit by a car. That's pretty cool. So, what we're doing to help save these guys. This fur is actually really coarse. The reason why I have that coarse fur is to protect them from those ants, those older ants and stuff that come out. That actually works for the material armor. All right, you know what? For being such a brave volunteer, Waterburger's got a free just a burger here for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> What is the next bird I have to show you? The bird of you can find all over the United States, I even know. down in South it? America. What are they? This bird of prey, Wild. not more well known for eating a lot of dead things. Yeah. It just happened to have a dead thing right under this barrel. Now it's been dead for a very, very long time. So, <laughs> you're squeamish? Might want to look wild. Here we go. <laughs> Here, Joe, for a second, didn't I? <laughs> the next bird I have to show you is a turkey vulture. Our turkey vulture's name is Mortimer. Mortimer is going to be joining me right down here. There he is. Now, vultures hunt a little bit differently than most birds of prey. Instead of using their eyesight to find their food, these vultures will actually use an incredible sense of smell. Got a One thing you might notice while Mortimer's sunning himself there is he's missing his left wing. Unfortunately, he injured that wing so severely Why? that when he was brought to a serious occurrence, in order to save his life, he actually had to remove that wing. Tell him what so happened. We're going to back into the wild again. We're going to show you. We're sort of the animal ambassador to his species. So you guys can see vultures up close and personal. Something you might not get to do in the wild. That sunny behavior you see him doing, him spreading on his wings like that. So there's a couple things for these birds. First of all, it keeps their body warm. So it's a real cold day out. These guys will uh, sun themselves to be warm. Secondly, since they get too wild, they eat a lot of that dead stuff. They get too hot in the area. They actually utilize the UV rays from the sun to sort of take off that bacteria and sterilize it. That's pretty cool. That's also really cool about these vultures. They're one of only a few birds in the entire world that do have a certain smell. Might be one of my favorite misconceptions. What about if you find a baby bird, pick it up, put it back in the nest, the mother's going to smell your scent on it and reject it? Actually, not true at all. You know, the best thing for you guys to do when you find a baby is just leave it alone. The parents are probably really close by, waiting for you to leave so they can come to their baby. All right, Mortimer, well, you did a pretty good job out here. We just going to make our way back home. Yep, right down there. There you go. Good job. Right back through there. There you go. Dad, Dad. We had some riddles. We had some riddles. Okay. Guys, as you can see, conservation is something that's extremely important to us here at the show. Not only do we want to get you guys excited about the wildlife out there, but we also like to raise the money to help support that wildlife. The way we do that is the donation box that will right around the corner here with Kevin. Thank you very much, Kevin. You know, at the end of our show, you guys are welcome to come and make a donation. Every single dollar that you guys put in the box goes straight to support our wildlife rehabilitation program. 
you know, every year, thousands of shorebirds and raptors, marine mammals, even reptiles get hurt out there. It is some point in